We can start with the Pittsburgh Steelers, yes, Matthew. Sir. And usually uh, we go through this by position. We start with the quarterback. Let's start with Ben Roethlisberger, who's an interesting one for fantasy this year, Matthew, because I think in a vacuum on me. the whole. No, but I'll, here's the reason why. Okay. Is that I think if like at the end of the year, Ben could have like a semi-respectable number of overall fantasy points as an average could look pretty decent. And yet, I think what's clear is that the game hasn't passed him by, per se, but the fantasy game has passed him by. He's a complete zero with his legs, and you're probably relying upon some shifts from where things were last year, which at the age of, what, 38, you don't expect, what's the old saying? You can't teach an old dog new tricks, right? That I think <laughs> Did you Ben's... have to look right at me when you said that? But yes, you're right. <laughs> Ben had 33 passing touchdowns last year. Like that's a very respectable number of passing touchdowns. It is and yet, solid. and no, but I'm saying it's solid, yes. right? Like so, but no one I think is is preparing to go into the season with Ben as their preferred target at quarterback. Fair enough. A thousand percent. I mean, I think the way you phrase it is like, is Ben going to be a solid enough quarterback? Yeah, probably. Will he be good enough for the players that you care about? Deontay Johnson's, Chase Claypool's. Najee Harris, et cetera, et cetera, Juju Smith-Schuster. Yes, all those things, correct. But there's literally no upside. There's only downside with Ben, right? The, the, the odds of Ben being a drop-back passer and throwing 45 touchdowns and, you know, close to 5,000 yards, which is what he would need to break into, like, the top 10 or 12, given the rushing ability of all the other quarterbacks that are out there in the NFL and in fantasy, is very slim, Right, yep. especially because, by the way, they've added Najee Harris. Last year, they had to throw because they couldn't run the ball. The expectation this year is that Harris gets a big workload. The other concern with Ben Roethlisberger is not only is there not any upside, but there's downside. Here's a guy who has played all 16 games once, literally one time in the past six seasons. He did play 15 games last year, but he's played all 16 once in the past six seasons. So there's, there's concern about injuries, obviously, with Ben. Last year, he had eight different games as QB 17 or worse. Like, there are weeks where Ben can just absolutely kill you. And there's the idea that Ben's going to win you a week the way that other quarterbacks potentially could, I think is, is hard to imagine, especially because where he's going, Ben Roethlisberger's Current ADP is, I mean, I'm at QB 23. Yeah, I think it's undrafted. It's undrafted. He's, I mean, like people aren't that. even drafting. So, like, towards the end of there, like, you'd much rather take a, a flyer on a Justin Fields or a Trey Lance or, a, you know, I, I, honestly, like, Baker Mayfield's going in that range. Like, I, I, I'm much higher on Baker Mayfield. Fitzy. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of guys that I think have legit upside that Ben doesn't have. So, I think where Ben fits in is more about what it means for the wide receiver. So, we'll get to in just a moment. Before we do that, let's get to Najee Harris, who... Yep. I don't know why, and I could be wrong, but it feels like every year there's like one rookie that without doubt is going to be drafted extremely high in fantasy, and you're like, this guy is the one, even though there's plenty of evidence suggesting that A, there will be more than one rookie that makes an impact, and B, the one that we assume will be the impact rookie isn't always the impact rookie. Clyde edwards Delaire, I'm looking at you last year. But yeah. the stars have aligned for a significant role for Najee Harris in a few ways. Incredibly talented guy. He was the first running back off the board for a reason. Second of all, the Pittsburgh Steelers' depth chart behind him is relatively slim. They've got guys like Benny Snell and Jalen Samuels, but if they wanted either Kalen of those Balazs. guys, Kalen Balazs, Kalen Balazs, uh, the Balazs Mirage is yeah. over there. Yep. Uh, I don't know that any of those guys should be expected to have any workload other than occasional spelling of duties slash special teams value, right? So right. pretty clear he's the number one guy. The Steelers made no mystery about that. They have talked all offseason with the new offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, but wanting to run the football better and more effectively and more frequently. However, there's one thing that bothers me about Najee Harris, Matthew. I guess there's, yeah, one thing. The only one right. thing that kind of concerns me. Okay, what do you got? Putrid offensive line last year. Yeah. And it probably got worse this offseason. Pittsburgh believes it got better, but they lost two starters on the left side of the line, their center as well. Alejandro Villanueva is now a Raven. David DeCastro got cut, unsigned, maybe will retire. Mike Pouncey. He retired. This is the changing of the guard right now along the offensive line in Pittsburgh. Is that a cause for the concern, or has that been baked into the fact that Najee Harris right now is being drafted as RB12? See, I think it's a little bit of both. I, okay. think, I, I think it's definitely like a little bit of an eyebrow raise, mm -hmm. but I think that if they had a great offensive line, if he was – if he was coming right on the heels of like two years ago, replacing Le'Veon Bell kind of thing, you know, a couple of years ago, um, 
goes like top five or six. So I think it's I think it's baked in a little bit uh, into his ADP in terms of where he's going. I also think that it might be a little bit overblown. Make no mistake, offensive line is very important, right? Especially given the division they play in. But I think that volume can sometimes mask that. Mm -hmm. So Najee Harris may not Najee Harris may not win any efficiency awards. I agree with you by the way. <laughs> you know Hugely what I mean? on this, yeah. Yeah, but he's going to get massive volume. I remember Saquon Barkley's rookie year. That was just what I was going to say. And everyone was just like, "But the Giants' offensive line is putrid." Right. And we were like, "Yes, but the Giants need him to work." And Saquon Barkley is going to get so much volume that it doesn't matter. And that's ended up what happening. Obviously, Saquon Barkley had an, an incredible rookie year right. fantasy football-wise and NFL-wise, of course, as well. So my expectation here is that Harris, who's a really nice pass catcher, we saw it at Alabama, totally. yeah. he's going to be on the field for all three downs. And it's a good offense. I, I think when you think about the pass catchers in, in Pittsburgh, Juju and Claypool and Deontay Johnson and Eric Ebron and James Washington can take the – you know, can fly down the field. Like he's going to see a lot of like six man boxes just because you've got to respect the passing game. Yeah. He'll have good looks. He'll get his touches in the passing game too. And the closing thought for me is just that despite what's happened over the past couple of years, I believe Mike Tomlin's DNA is to have a workhorse running back. We yes. saw it with Le'Veon Bell. We saw it for James Conner after he took over for Le'Veon Bell. I think that's how organizationally they want to build their backfield. So I expect this to be, Easily the busiest rookie in fantasy football this year. No question about it. I think I think he is by far the safest yep. rookie running back. You never know what's going to happen until you play the games, but as we sit here today, to me, he's the guy with the safest role and the safest floor of any rookie. By the way, Josh Jacobs, same thing. People said, oh, the Raiders' offensive line is brutal. And we're like, Josh Jacobs is going to get a ton of work. Right. Josh Jacobs, by the way, had a really good rookie year fantasy-wise. He, he did. This, to me, is much more Josh Jacobs than Clyde edwards Lair, at least as far as the rookie season goes. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.